Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to try and do the kind of the opposite of what we did when we multiplied binomials together. So remember, multiplying binomials is me giving you something like this. x plus 3 times x minus 6. And then the term a lot of students like to use is foiling. You do the first terms, you get x squared. You do the outer terms, you get minus 6x. You do the inner terms you get plus 3x, and you do the last terms, you get minus 18, and then this turns into x squared minus 3x minus 18. So we're going to do the opposite, where I give you this, and you try to get that out of it. Okay? And it, honestly, there's just a lot of trial and error that goes into it. Now that the keys here, though, to notice are these things. So, whoop. Move this anyway. Notice this one's x squared, and for all the ones that I'm going to give you today, they're all going to be x squared. And so x times x is what gives you this first term right here. Okay. So if there's an x squared here, you know you're going to have an x here and an x over here too. And then if you also look, negative 18's right here, and 3 times negative 6 ends up being negative 18. So those are pretty important things. One other thing to note, 3 plus negative 6 turns out to be that number right there. Okay, but the, the keys here, I think, are going to be that first term and that last term. Okay, so let's do a couple examples. Okay, so let me put this one up. x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, so I want to factor that, which means I need two parentheses. And I know the first term has to, the first terms that I multiply together have to multiply out to be x squared. So the only things that do that are x times x. Now I need two other terms to go here and here that end up coming out to be 6. So it's either going to be 6 and 1 or 2 and 3, right? Because they have to multiply out to 6. So if I put a 2 here, or let's try the 6 and 1. If I put a 1 here and a 6 here, when I multiply these out, I'm going to get x squared plus 6x plus another x. So that's going to give me 7x and then plus 6. So this one's not going to work because I want 5x here. Okay, so let me try the 2 and the 3 instead. 2 here, 3 here. When I work this out, I'm going to get x squared for the first terms. The outer terms give me 3x, and the inner terms give me 2x, so that's 5 total. And then the last terms give me 6. So this right here is the correct answer. Whoa. Right here. x plus 2 times x plus 3. Okay. Let's try another one. Uh, whoops. So let's try x squared minus 10x plus 9. Okay, so here are my parentheses. I know the first two terms have to multiply out to x. And the last two terms have to multiply out to 9. And uh, I need to get a negative 10x out of that somehow. So when you look at 9, you know, 1 and 9 multiply together. You know, 3 and 3 multiply together. We actually have one other, uh, two other choices. You also have negative 1 times negative 9 and negative 3 times negative 3. So the goal is to pick the one of these. We know that, that the, all of those will get me 9 if I put one number here and one number here. But what I need is I need to also account for that negative 10 right here. So if I did, you know, plus 1, plus 9, the problem with that is this will give me 9x, this will give me 1x, so I get positive 10x as my middle term. But I want negative 10x. So the way around it is, let's switch our signs. Negative here, negative there. And now when we multiply this out to double check, we get x squared minus 9x minus 1x plus 9. That's the first outer inner last, the FOIL method. 
And if you simplify, you get back what we started with. So this right here is the correct answer. X minus one, X minus nine. Let's do one more example. X squared minus five X minus 14. Okay, again, it's x squared, so it's got to be x here and x here. Negative 14. You've got to find two terms that multiply to negative 14. So it could be like 1 and negative 14. It could be negative 1 and positive 14. It could be 2 and negative 7. Or it could be negative 7 and 2. The key here is we want to get a negative 5x out of the whole thing. Notice here, the ones that we picked, the negative 1 and negative 9, those add up to be the middle term, negative 10. Over here, we pick the 2 and the 3. Those add up to be the 5 right here. So really, I'm trying to pick one of these sets that adds to negative 5. And only this one does it. Minus 7 plus 2. And you can double check that, and that'll work. So let's make a list of the rules here. First thing. Okay, and this is if you have x squared plus something times x plus something else. Okay, so I'm going to put a b here and a c here. Normally there's an a in front here, but I'm not worried about that right now. So if you get this, then the first step is... Uh, find or set up your parentheses and you know that you're going to get an X here and an X here. Okay, the next thing is let's figure out what multiplies out to C. Okay. After that you want to figure out which of those pairs sums to B. Okay? And then that essentially fills in the rest of those parentheses. Alright, so let me give you one to try. Let's try this one. x squared minus 12x plus 20. See if you can come up with this one. Try it for homework. Put it on your homework and we'll see how you do.